Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines Palestinians protest normalization of ties with Israel by Bahrain and the UAE. President Donald Trump admits to have considered the assassination of Syrian President Bashar al Assad. Algerian journalist Khalid Nareni's prison time reduced. World Trade Organization panel rules that US tariffs on China are not in conformity to international trade laws. And social movements oppose the eviction of homeless people in New York. On Tuesday, hundreds of Palestinians came out in protest in the occupied West Bank and the Gaza Strip, denouncing the normalization agreements by the UAE and Bahrain with Israel. The deals were brokered by the United States. The signing of the deals took place on Tuesday at the White House, where Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met officials of the two Gulf countries. Just hours later, the Israeli military carried out a series of air raids on the Gaza Strip. In response to the deals, Palestinians demonstrated in the West Bank cities of Nablus and Hebron and also in Gaza. Dozens also took part in a demonstration in Ramallah, which is the home of the Palestinian Authority. The Palestinian Unified National Command of Popular Resistance called for protests to reject the normalization deals. In a statement, it called for Friday to be considered a day of mourning in which black flags are raised in all squares, buildings and homes. The deals make them the third and fourth Arab states to take such steps to normalize ties with Israel. Israel signed peace treaties with Egypt in 1979 and Jordan in 1994. The move comes in the context of Trump's ongoing re-election campaign and is widely seen as a campaign gimmick by the president. Speaking to reporters, Trump said that he expected more Arab countries to normalize ties with Israel and went to the extent of saying that Palestinians should eventually join or be, to quote him, left out in the cold. On Tuesday, US President Donald Trump also revealed in an interview that earlier in his term, he wanted to assassinate Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. The new revelation is a complete U-turn from his comments in 2018. At that point, he had fervently denied the claim to this effect, which was made by journalist Bob Woodward. The assassination of President Assad by the United States uh, never even discussed. The book is total fiction. Bob Woodward had reported in his 2018 book Fear that Trump pressed U.S. Secretary of Defense James Mattis for uh, assassinating Assad. On Tuesday, Trump confirmed Woodward's argument by saying that Mattis had opposed it, calling him an overrated general. Uh, I would have uh, rather taken him out. I had a ball set. Mattis didn't want to do it. In the past, the US has imposed tough economic sanctions aimed at deterring foreign business activity on Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's government. These policies have further exacerbated the economic meltdown in the already war-torn country. The US has received severe criticism from Russia and China on the issue of its interventions in Syria as attempts to overthrow the legitimate government of the country. And then on Tuesday, Algerian journalist Khalid Rereni was sentenced to a reduced term prison of two years. The court in Algiers had on August 10th sentenced him to a three-year prison term along with a fine of 50,000 Algerian dinars. Rereni was arrested on March 29th of this year while he was covering the anti-establishment and anti-government Iraq protest movement taking place in the country. These protests have been taking place for nearly a year. He was charged with various accusations such as inciting an unarmed gathering and endangering national security. He also expressed solidarity with the Iraq protesters, encouraging them to continue their agitation until they achieve their goals of political, social and economic reform in the country. The defence team now intends to take the appeal to the Algerian Supreme Court. Several international press freedom and human rights organisations including Reporters Without Borders and Amnesty International also condemned the court's judgement earlier. In the last few weeks, an international campaign to secure his release has been launched. Protest rallies have been held in cities across the world. French journalists staged a rally last week outside the Algerian embassy in Paris in order to apply international pressure on the government to release Dorini. Tunisian journalists also held demonstrations in front of their union's headquarters on the same day to show their solidarity and support for Dorini and demand his release. We now move on to the World Trade Organization, which ruled that US tariffs imposed on Chinese goods starting in 2018 violated global trade rules. The WTO's 3% panel stated that US tariffs broke agreed-upon rules as they applied only to China and were above the maximum rates that the United States signed on to. The panel also added that the US had failed to provide adequate justification as to why its measures constituted a justifiable exception. The panel recommended that the US bring its measures to court into conformity with its obligations and encourage the two sides to resolve the border dispute. After the ruling on Tuesday, President Trump has hinted at taking action against the WTO. The US President has already quit the UNESCO and plans to leave the World Health Organization. The rulings are likely to have no consequences for American tariff policy as the organization's appellate system is currently non-functional. And finally, in our In Focus section, we bring you a video of how the mayor of New York was forced to halt evictions in the Upper West Side area after mobilizations by organizations.
because here we are in the middle of a pandemic, in a very dangerous situation, and trying to find ways to save lives, yet the mayor has chosen to further endanger us by using his power to inflict harm on us in such a way that it would trigger many of us who suffer from substance use disorder and mental health issues. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from the country and the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.